Over the past few videos, we've been looking at doing pre-rendering in Blazor. And as promised, what I'm going to show you this time is how to actually do some unit tests on that. So let's just go in there and do a quick recap. Here we've got our application. And if we run that up, then we can see we get the browser coming up with all the data straight away. And then we see those details come in a fraction later because that's when the data becomes available on the browser. So it's pre-rendered, delivered to the browser simply as HTML, and then the data comes in fetched out of the serialized JSON data. And so what we need to do is write some tests for that. So what we had to remember was the component itself, the home.razor, and then the problem we've got is this persistence service, which was doing that work of creating the data both on the server and then on the client. And that's something we're going to have to mock to make all of this work. So I've already put in a test project using XUnit. I'm going to need to add a couple of things to that. I'm going to add into their BUnit, which is the library for testing Blazor, which we did a video on a while back. So we'll have a look at that. And also, I'm going to need a mocking framework. So for that, I'm going to use nSubstitute. So let's also get hold of that. And so that's got all of that going. And so let's now go to our test project and go to the home.tests. And the things we need to do here for BUnit, remember, we need to derive the test class from test context and get hold of that from BUnit. And then if we just do something simple like put in a creation test, so we'll have a fact, public void creation. And all we need to do is say var component equals, and then you can see it's putting in that render component, but we don't want to have the full namespace in there. So let's get rid of that and just generate the using. And then we can simply say assert dot not null. Don't know what it thinks. Instances, we just want a component in there. And then if we run the test there, we're going to get an immediate failure. The reason being, we haven't provided the appropriate dependency injections. The first one it's hitting is for the persistence service, which is the thing we're going to have trouble with. It will also, though, be hitting one on the API service, because remember, if we take a look at our actual home component, it also uses the API service that we saw for how to get the data from the back end. So that one, actually, the API service, is pretty easy to mock we can just use n substitute for that. So let's just put in a private, read only, and then i API service, and then just do the substitute for there and get hold of the namespace for that one. So that'd be fine. But actually doing this for the i persistence service is something that I can't really find a good way of doing using a mocking framework like n substitute. The problem is, if we look at how the code's used, we can see that we've got this register method which is generic, and we're using it in this case for books, and we're using it for authors. And if we were using a mocking framework, we'd then have to prime that register to configure it for how it's going to behave for each of those individual instances, which gets rather messy. Rather, we can just write our own mock, which is going to turn out to be very simple, and then take advantage of the generics to get it all to work straight off. So it's one of these cases where actually it's simpler to do this by hand. So let's do that. Let's add to our test code a folder called mocks. And then in there, we're going to add a class called mock persistence service. And then in there, tidy that up a little, we're going to implement the interface. So I persistence service. And then let's put all of that in. And then let's just start by making this an empty stub. So we're going to, on that build, we're simply going to say return. It's a task, so we're going to have to have task from result. And again, it's guess what we want. And we're going to have this new persisting component state subscription. That thing itself is something we're not going to be able to mock because if we just take a look at it, then it's a struct. And you can't really mock structs because you can't have polymorphism in structs. And so that's not going to work. So we just return that. It's very simple, not really doing very much. Then on this register, remember that register is a chained method. So we're returning an I persistent service. So for now, let's just say return this on that one. So that will mean the calls are chained together. And now then, let's go back to the test code. And all we need to do is register both of those mocks. So we're going to put in a constructor. And then we can say services which we get from the test context base class. Let's add in that API service and just get hold of the namespace for that. And then also, let's say services and then just that. Again, get hold of the namespace. 
And so that will mean it uses the mock persistence service. And so now when we run our tests, it should at least get past that creation because we're injecting those services, even though it's not actually doing anything with them. Let's now move on and write some actual tests. So just a couple of simple ones. It's not going to be completely comprehensive. So we'll have a fact and we'll call this one simply list books. First thing we're going to need is some dummy books. And you can see that the IntelliSense has worked out quite a lot of that. So let's put that in and then as ever go through and make sure it's working. So firstly, we just need to get hold of the namespace for that. So we've done all that. No such thing as an author ID in books. So let's get rid of that. So you can see the AI doesn't always get it right. But what we do have in a book is a year. So let's get Copilot to do that because it's a bit tiresome. I find Copilot's really good at just creating mock data. So let's try this, add years to the books. And you can see it's put some years in there. So let's accept that. And it's just given us our mock data. Then we can see the API service get books is returning a set of books. Now, remember, if we just take a quick look at the Razor page itself, we have a table of books and a table of authors. So in our tests, we also should be saying underscore API service get authors. And that just wants to return nothing at all for now. So we'll just look at books. And then in another test, we'll just look at authors. We then render the component, that's good. And then it's completely got it wrong in terms of how to look this up because we're not using list items. And also it's not being very thorough, it's only giving us the count. So what we've got to say here, var cells equals, and then we're gonna look this up, component, find all. And we could just go for TD, but I'd rather be a bit more precise. So we're gonna go table, T body, T row, so that we've got everything in there. And then we simply need to test for that. So what I'm now gonna do is insert dot collection. And then again, let's see if the AI can get this right. Looking pretty good. So it's gone through each of the three of them and got the title and the year. But what it missed out, because it hasn't looked in this other file, is that also on those we have the button as well, that details button. So that's not going to quite work because each of those will be in a TD. So let's just pop that in there. And remember the button says details. And then let's do another one there with the details. And let's do another one there with the details. And that's looking pretty good, I think, for the test. So we create some dummy books, set those up to be returned by the API service, and then we look to see if it's created the table. But that is not gonna work, of course, because we haven't yet done that mock pre-rendering service. And so you can see that it's not getting anything written across. Before we do that, let's also just add tests to the authors. And again, let's see if Copilot can do this and see what happens there. And let's approve that and then go through and see if we can fix it. So we've got a list authors. It's generated some authors there. Not entirely happy with that because it's given them each the same first name, even though it's given them different last names. The names themselves don't really matter in testing, so we don't have to think about it. So let's just change those first names to look like that. Then it's done the get books. It's done the right thing to return an empty array, but not very good style because empty arrays nowadays we can just do like that. It's then got the get authors to return authors. That's good. It's rendered the component. It's looked for the cells in exactly the same way. So it's clearly copying what I did there. But what it's got slightly wrong is it hasn't got those cells correct. So if we look again at the markup, you can see that for the authors table, we've got first name and last name. So let's just go back and do that. So that wants to be duplicated each of those and then that's going to be author digit one and then surname one author two and then surname two author three and then surname three and that should be the correct thing so i really find that copilot is very very helpful when you're doing things like testing because you don't have to be very clever to write tests. It's actually very boring and monotonous, just repeating data, making things up. And that's what Copilot's really good at. I wouldn't ask Copilot to work out how to implement my mock persistent service. Well, I've tried, it's not very good. So I'll show you for myself, but certainly for the tests, that's pretty good. But again, those tests are gonna fail because we haven't put in that mock persisting service. And so let's start doing that. And remember the thing that we're doing is we register 
for each of the data types, we pass in with this register two lambda expressions. We've got this one that takes some books and puts it into the actual variable books. And we've got this one that fetches the books from the API service or similar with authors in the second case. And remember, the reason we did it like that is we don't always get the data from the API service. Sometimes we get it from the store of the pre-rendered data that we were talking about. Now, thing to bear in mind, we are not, when we're writing these tests, trying to test that that whole pre-rendering mechanism works. That sort of thing has to be done in an end-to-end -end test because it involves actual interaction with the browser. We're simply writing code to test that this component does what it's supposed to do. So all we need to do is write something that gets the data out of the one function, this one, and puts that one in there. And so a very simple implementation would just be this. All we need to do is take that assignment and then invoke that creation. And so the creation will create the data and then the assignment will put it in the right place. Much, much simpler than the real code. Slight problem is the creation isn't returning the data, which is the data type T. It's returning the task of that data because this has to be asynchronous. One way to get around that, we could just put result in there and that just blocks until we get the result, which of course in testing code means nothing because we're not really running asynchronously. The data will just be immediately there. So actually that's all we have to do. And if I run that now, then you can see we're getting the green lights because it calls this twice. Once will be for the books, once will be for the authors. So let's just run that in debug. We hit that and if we look in the call stack, you can see that's coming out of the call there and just copying the data over. And then if we go again, it'll do the second one and then everything's working fine. So we can see how it works. There is a slight problem. I might accept that as a solution if I were doing a code review, but it does have a little bit of a flaw in that the build isn't doing anything. And that means that it's not being tested and that means we could make mistakes. And so if back in the actual component, someone were to make a mistake and miss off the build, so say they tried to use it like that, then they're doing the registers. And at the moment, that is going to pass the tests because all the work was done in the register and none of the work was done in the build. But if I run it up, then we can see it's just sitting there loading. We're not getting any data back because the build has to do some work. And so I think it's more realistic if we put code in there to make that work. And it's pretty simple because all we need to do here is make sure rather than executing this creation put into assignment, when we do the register, we'll store those up in a list and we'll actually do it in the build. And that'll mean that only works if the build gets called. So let's put a private read only. And then we want a list of, and these are going to be functions that return a task because they have to be asynchronous. So it's going to be a func that returns a task, but I don't like calling it registrations. I'm just going to call this actions. And I don't like that form of initialization. So it's just going to be an empty list like that. And then in this case, all we need to do is say actions.add. And then it's again guessed for us. So we're just putting in all of that. Don't actually need the curly braces. So let's keep it nice and simple. And so tidy it up like that. And that works fine. And then in here, we've just got to loop through them. So what we're going to do is make this async. And then we just say for each and then action and actions. And then that's all we have to do. Await the action because that's going to then be calling that bit of code there. We no longer need the task and result now that we've made it async, so we can just return a new one of those. And that should now, the important thing, is fail when we run the tests, because remember that build was never being called, and so we're getting back to where we were before. But now if we put this back to what it was and do do the build, and then we run the tests, we can see that's all working fine. And of course, when we run it up, that will now be working fine as well. So that's really all we had there, how to do the testing. Very simple, it turns out, this mock persistent service with maybe that slight complication of storing up those functions and calling them later on to make it work more like the real thing. But just one of those situations, I think, where you can get yourself tied in knots trying to do this with a mocking library like nsubstitute when just writing your own mock is very, very simple. And that's going to be 
reusable wherever we're using this persistent service, we can test it with this. Remember, as I said, though, we're not testing here the pre-rendering because that has to be an end-to-end -end test. We're testing just the component itself. And we also saw along the way quite nice use of Copilot, particularly when you're doing testing. We saw some of the pros, some of the cons, how you've always got to examine the code you're given, make sure it makes sense, and tidy it up as you go along. So that was it really for that part of pre-rendering. We've got a few more things to look at on this project in terms of how we communicate back with the API, but we'll see that next time. So if you're interested in that, do click like, do subscribe, and I'll see you for the next video.